Throw that bag, I'm a bad little bitch, nigga. Got every ex nigga mad and they big bitter. Diamonds on the chain, blinging off my tits, nigga. I hit the stone, he gon' curve up like a pitch, nigga. Work with me, pussy good, so we been hooked. If he got seen out with me, it's a big look. Work with hot body smoking like a big blunt. What's going on, y'all? It's your girl, Alexis. What's goody? If you're new here, my name is Alexis Wagwan Goody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to be a part of the Goody Gang. And if you are not new here, then girl, you know what's going on. You really know what's going on. But as you guys can see from that title, today I'm going to be doing something that I haven't done on my channel since like one of my first videos on YouTube ever. Like I remember I did a story time about me hopping through this girl's window. And um, it was cute or whatever. But, you know, I deleted it because it was one of my first videos and everything like that. But we've come a long way, a year and some change later. So I'm here to give you guys um, a story time about the time that I dated a fucking crackhead. <laughs> yes, I dated a fucking crackhead, okay? <laughs> this is not even funny. Okay, because it's gonna it sounds so terrible. I need to hurry up and get to the story. <laughs> So without further ado, before we get started with this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you follow me on all my social medias. They'll be in the description down below. And check out all my other videos, girl. You know, stay for a good time, not a long time. It's all right. But um, yeah, let's get right into the story time. Okay, so this has to be about like, I want to say four years ago. No, I'm lying. Whoa. Maybe like no maybe like four and some change maybe five years ago it's probably like five years ago at this point but um i had i was cool with this girl i had a couple friends or whatever i was cool with this girl and she was going out with some boy or whatever some motherfucking dweeb and um he had some friends or whatever more dweebs okay but when you're like you know 17 18 you know everybody seemed cool so whatever but I was 17 years old and um I was like 17 I think I was about to turn 18 or something like that but I was like 17 years old and um yeah so she had this boyfriend he had these this these other dweeby ass friends and um yeah so one day she got a ride she and him okay so one day <laughs> I guess I gotta give names. Okay. 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 The girl that I'm talking about, the friend I used to be cool with, we gonna call her. We gonna call her. We gonna call her Tiana. We gonna call her Tiana. The girl I was cool with, her name is Tiana. Then the her boyfriend's name, his her boyfriend name don't even really matter. So just just know she got a boyfriend. But the crackhead I was dating. We gonna call him. We gonna call him JJ. Okay, we gonna call him JJ. So, yes, me and Tiana was friends. She had her boyfriend or whatever. So Tiana and her boyfriend got a ride from JJ. I guess asked JJ to take Tiana's boyfriend to work. So JJ dropped Tiana and her boyfriend to work. Well, her boyfriend to work, and then she was gonna come to my house. So she came to my house. They pulled up whatever. But I needed. I, this is my first time ever meeting him. I needed um so I needed to take money out. You know? So I was basically like, drop me to um drop me to the store, let me go to the ATM and let me get some money out. So I was like, so I basically asked Tiana, I said, Can you ask, you know, JJ or whatever, can you can he drop me to the store so I can take some money out? Cause you know, we about to and I needed I needed some money to, you know, to cop. So yeah, so we get in the car, whatever. That's my first time meeting. I'm in the front seat. The first time me and him, I was like, oh, what's good, what's good, what's good, whatever. And, um, you know, I started already noticing little things. Like, I started noticing how he would, um, like, he had, he would do this thing. I can't remember it now, really, but I think it was something. But I remember telling her, like, bitch, this nigga mad fidgety. It would be, like, some fidgety shit he would do. I think it was something with his hand. Like, he would do, like, some fidgety shit. I don't know, but it was definitely some crackhead material, Okay. Like, he would do some fidgety shit with his hand. And that was the first thing I noticed. But I'm like, I right, whatever. People live their life. That's your life. I don't know. Um, So, we chilling or whatever. I can tell he's already a little bit of, like, a reckless driver. But I'm like, all right. I'm with my sis. She knows him. Her boyfriend knows him. They all cool. So, I don't think she would put me in a position to be, you know, with somebody that's real fucking retarded. Okay, 
Um, so yeah, anyway, I go to the store, I go get my money out or whatever, I, I, whatever. And, um, I put my card, I don't know fucking why, but I put my fucking card, my, cause I didn't have a wallet with me. I just had on like this Nike, um, cool fit outfit. It's literally just like the skin tight, top, long sleeve top with the leggings, like, but it's, it's like some air cooling material. I don't know, but it's not cotton. It's not. It's that material you work out in. Like, it's like compression or something. Whatever. I had that on and some slippers. And some fucking wig with a bang. Looking mad ghetto. I didn't expect to go nowhere, but whatever. All right, whatever. That's not the point. After that, we left. After we left the store, whatever. Um, They was like, oh, um, I gotta go to, um, I gotta go to Merrick or like some, some street or whatever in Queens. And was like, oh, I gotta go over here, blah, blah, whatever. So I look back at her, I'm like, girl, we going, like, I basically looking at her like, is it okay? Like, I'm looking at her like, what you want to do? Because this is your man's, like, I don't know, like, I'm just here, whatever. She's like, yeah, I guess what I'm like, I, yeah, I guess, like, whatever. We ain't planning on doing shit. I just planned on going back to the crib, rolling up, and that's it. So, basically, um, yeah, we ended up going to, to Merrick, this part of Queens, went to this different part of Queens. And we chilling, and next thing you know, these two motherfucking dirty ass niggas get in the fucking car, looking mad fucking suspicious. They get in the car, so Tiana's in the back seat. She's behind me. I'm in the front seat. So she's right behind me. I'm in the front seat. And then the two dirty niggas, the two dirty niggas got like in the back seat right behind, right next to her. So one of the niggas is in the middle, and the other nigga is on the, by the other door. So I'm like, okay, I don't even really think jj know these niggas but whatever i don't know it was just all fucking suspect uh, suspect just please stick along with the story please it was all suspect whatever so these dirty niggas get in the car i whatever then again they like oh we gotta go to brooklyn i'm like I'm like, the fuck? I'm looking back at Tiana like, all right, bitch, now would be your time to say something if we in danger, like, or if something is not right. She not saying nothing. Mind you, Tiana's the type, like, she was the type in the group to, like, be on be on point with everything. Like, mm, I don't know, I'm fucking with that. I ain't fucking with that. I ain't fucking with that. So she's not saying nothing. I'm like, I bet, whatever. Again, these is not my mans. These, you know this nigga. You know the driver. I don't know this nigga. So she not speaking up. So I'm like, all right, whatever whatever let's go and i'm not gonna lie back then and back then and shit like i was a wild one okay i didn't give a fuck like i was with all the shit so like i didn't give a fuck like i played with my life i'm gonna be honest with you i played with my life but um basically yeah we ended up driving to brooklyn again he's driving mad reckless all that all that whatever we all started rolling up because i guess the niggas had weed so we all started rolling up smoking whatever i don't know why but i put my motherfucking debit card because I didn't have no pockets, like I said. I didn't have no pockets or whatever. So I put my debit card in, like, the little holder part by the door. Like, that little part by the door. So I put it right there with, like, a bag of weed that I caught from the guy and, like, a lighter or something. So it's weed and my card is in, like, the little part. So um, we get to Brooklyn now. And it's dark. Now it's, now it's like, dark. We, we met this nigga when the sun was up. I guess, like, you know, it got dark from driving to Brooklyn. So now it's dark. We on some strange-ass block. I don't know which part of Brooklyn this is. But next thing you know, we park up for a second. So me and, me and Tiana just looking at each other like, okay, like, whatever. These niggas in the back doing whatever they doing. Some fucking stranger walked up to the fucking car and is, like, in a window. I'm like, the fuck? So I guess it was like, no, go around, go around. So he went to the niggas that was in the back and and um and I guess like made an exchange with them, whatever. I don't know, that's none of my fucking business. But um, yeah, whatever. After that, we ended up driving back to um to Queens. We get back to Queens and we're like on like the strip that we I guess we picked the niggas up from. We like over there driving mad crazy that strip is hot so we driving mad nigga driving mad crazy mad crazy car smell like weed car got weed car got weed in it all that whatever this all i know was this nigga made one right turn woo, 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 woo. <laughs> you just see the red lights in the back you just see the red lights behind it i said oh fuck like i just feel like i remember like yesterday i just remember look at the back window like fuck like oh my god like what the fuck whatever 
Yes, girl, the cops don't pull us over. They was like, the cops came, they was like, everybody step out, step to the back of the car. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mind you, my credit, my debit card is in my, the part where I was sitting and the weed was where I was sitting. So they, you already know, whatever. They like start speaking, start speaking, start speaking. Nobody's speaking. You feel me? Nobody's speaking. So they booked us. They booked us, girl. They took us down. Okay. They took us the fuck down. All right. So it was a weekend. And if you are from New York and you ever got arrested, you know, if you get booked on a weekend, you're spending the whole weekend in there. So I was, I spent the whole weekend, me and Tiana and the niggas or whatever, spent the whole week in bookends. It was cold. It was dirty. And I was on my period. Yeah. And um, it was just disgusting. Like, I didn't eat nothing for two days. I didn't drink nothing. I didn't, I wasn't with nothing. I just kept asking the guy, like, when the fuck am I leaving? Like, what's going on? Really feeling like I'm singing a bit, the jailhouse blues and shit. Because I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Whatever. I remember, like, eight numbers that night. I'm calling everybody. I'm talking to everybody on the phone. I'm just like, it was crazy. Whatever. All right. I guess Monday come, we got to see the judge or whatever. Nigga see the judge. We went the fuck home. Me and Tiana was just on the phone like, girl, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck happened? Like, I don't even fucking know. Both our parents are just like, whatever, girl. When I tell y'all I was in that motherfucking shower crying. <laughs> crying, okay? Crying. I was washing up like. <laughs> and the first meal I had on my first day out was some Popeye's chicken. So, you know, I was a body in that shit. <laughs> but just sweaty JT. I would have. Okay, but back to the story. Um, that was just kind of how the introduction of how I met him. Okay. This is when I found out he was really a fucking crackhead. So you would think that after all of that, the first day I meet a nigga, he gets me locked up, right? You would think I would stop talking to this nigga, would never speak to this nigga again. Told you. 17, dumb, playing with my life. I'm telling you. Playing with my life. I was 17 years old, playing with my life. Just turned 18, so you know, I thought I was grown. So, um, this nigga calls me and he's like, oh, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. You know, that's like, that's not even me. That's not even how I give it up. That's crazy how the first time we meet that happens. You know, that's not usually what I'm on. That's not the type of time I'm on, blah, blah, blah. You know, me all fucking retarded. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, I understand, I guess. Like, I understand that shit was crazy, whatever, whoa, whoa, whoa. So we hung out again. <laughs> Before you come for me, before you come for me, girl, I don't even know because the nigga wasn't even that cute. Like, he wasn't giving cute. He wasn't giving none of that. So I don't even really know what my problem was. But, um, yeah, we hung out again or whatever. The next time we hung out, it was cool. It was it was calm, whatever. Like, we smoked, we chilled, we talked, whatever. I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe that was just a mistake. I believe that people make mistakes and, you know, it is what it is. So, you feel me? It, it is what it is, you know, whatever. And um, we hung out again. When I found out he was a fucking crackhead, is like around when I was about to turn 18. It was my 18th birthday. I was about to turn 18. And I dubbed his shit. I remember I was like, don't come to my motherfucking telly party. I don't want to fuck with you. Stop fucking with me. And he like, oh, but you're going to invite all my mans and not invite me. Blah, blah, blah. What the fuck? You dead ass, Alexis. Like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, all right, whatever. Suck my dick, come. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. Pull the fuck up. Like, I don't even care. You, whatever. Like, I'm like, whatever, but... You gotta bring a bottle. Mind you, these bum-ass niggas didn't bring no fucking bottle. They drank all my motherfucking liquor. Niggas be bums. Mind you, these be niggas that be scammers and little clapping shit up. They be fucking broke. They be bums, period. But anyway, um, yeah, so basically he pulled up or whatever, and I wasn't paying him no attention the whole night. I wasn't paying him no attention, whatever. It was time for him to go. Of course, my people stayed, and he had to go. The nigga is off mad Xanax. I didn't even know he was a fucking Xanax, fucking pill popping, perky taking ass motherfucker. This nigga's probably off like five Xanax, five Xanaxes. 
Cause he just mad, wobbly, all out of it. Mind you, he's starting to drink. He drinking and shit, whatever. His eyes was cross-eyed. They was crossing and all that. Like, I still got the video, I think, in my old Snapchat of when I recorded him the next morning, how he looked. Like, he looked done up, done up. I'm like, ew, whatever. Okay, so it's time for him to go, whatever. He's off Mad Xanax, whatever. He drove there. I guess he lost his keys in the room, but we looking for the keys and niggas is like, Okay, so no, no, no. He ended up, I guess, like, being in lobby, I guess, trying to sober up, whatever. He realized he don't got his keys. I guess his keys is lost in the room. So he like, oh, um, I need my keys, I need my keys. Every, like, two hours, this nigga is coming to the door like, yo, I need my keys, I need my keys. And we like, yo, your keys is not fucking in here, my nigga. Like, they're not in here. And he woke me up, like, the third time banging on the door. I woke up like, yo, my nigga, your fucking keys is not in here, my nigga. Like, I will fucking beat you. I'm starting to swing on him. I'm kicking at him. I'm jumping over the bed like fucking Tarzan. Like, my nigga, get the fuck out, my nigga. Your shit is not here. I was so mad. Like, I'm like, bro, this nigga is getting me tight. So, um, the morning came, whatever. You know, people left. People was leaving. We all getting ready to get the fuck up out, out the hotel or whatever. And, um... We looking because he came back again in the morning. No, I think we found him. Like, I went to the um to the lobby. And he's on the lobby couch, slumped out. The lady's like, yeah. He was banging on um, people's doors, waking them up. Um, He was just walking around. Nigga, pants into his knees. Okay? Pants to his knees. He looks strung the fuck out. He looks crazy. Like, crazy. So, we went back into the room. And niggas looked under the chair and found his keys. His keys was there. So, I'm like, okay, he wasn't bugging. But... Like, when I thought about it years later, I'm like, maybe that was a sign from God. I feel like if he drove home that night, the way he was so done, he would have gotten an accident. He would have gotten an accident. There's, there's not even no doubt in my mind that he would have gotten an accident. The way he was so, like, off it, girl, he would have died. And I would have felt bad. That shit would have probably been on my fucking hands because he was at my shit. And I would have had to live with that shit. Like, honestly, like, I don't like stuff like that. So, honestly, I thank God that his keys were still in the, in the, um, in the shit because he was so fucked up, he could not drive. Okay, whatever. The next morning, um, we was all like, I bet we about to go to Denny's, whatever. I brought him, I was like, just sit down. I'm like, nigga, just relax. Like, lay on the bed and relax because you're doing a lot. So... He, um, we was like, okay, we gonna go to Denny's, whatever. I guess he sobered up a little bit, whatever, but he's like, I could drive, I could drive, I could drive. So we was like, I bet, we all gonna go to Denny's. We all popped out, we went to Denny's in the morning. First of all, Denny's is disgusting, I don't like it. This is when I knew this nigga was the fucking biggest crackhead of, like, the universe. We sitting down, waiting for the food. We got the drinks, we got a Sprite, everything. I think he got a Sprite, whatever I got, everybody got whatever they got. Why the fuck did this nigga, this is where it gets real crackheadish, guys, why the fuck did this nigga take a bag of Xanax out and drop two Xanaxes in his Sprite in the restaurant, in front of all of us, just like that? Mind you, the nigga is still wobbly, still coming down from his motherfucking high off of being off all them other Xanaxes. This nigga gonna drop two fucking Xanaxes in his motherfucking Sprite. I'm looking like, yo, who the fuck was I fucking with? Like, what the fuck is that? Like, I'm like, boy, you're bugging. And niggas are trying to take this cup away from him. He's really not having it. Like, he's not having it. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, this nigga's a crackhead. But all of his little manses and shit is the ones that be selling him Xanaxes and stuff. And they see him moving like this and they didn't give a fuck about him. But, um, basically, we left the fucking restaurant and that nigga was just... Oh my god, it was even worse. His pants again, pants at his knees, damn near for he wobbly, he talking crazy, just embarrassing. Like he was just straight up just embarrassing. He was so embarrassing. I think one of his men took the wheel and just started driving or whatever. And they drove back to his friend's crib and shit like that or whatever. But um that shit was fucking crazy. Like that nigga really was a drug addict and i remember like i stopped fucking with him never spoke to him again and come to find out the nigga had to go to rehab like he really had to go to rehab he lost so much weight and um i just honestly i just honestly felt bad like i honestly just feel bad and felt bad for him because addiction is really real like it doesn't matter if you addicted to pills caffeine weed whatever 
people could be addicted to anything people could be addicted to fucking gambling that's like you know what i'm saying like it's like it could be so many things that people could be addicted to and i just honestly just felt bad for him because it's just like damn you too young for that like we was not even like in our 20s yet i don't think he probably was like 19 or maybe 20 or whatever but at the time but it was just so sad because he really would take like four xanaxes in like a matter of like six hours like maybe a xanax every hour i've seen a lot of his other friends like after all of that um i would see a lot of his other friends fall into that same trap just drug addicts like that shit is really real like especially a couple years ago when they thought that shit was cool like when future used to rap about that and all the rappers these niggas took that shit literally like these niggas was really out here popping xanax perkies all that and um it's crazy i don't call him a crackhead to, to make it a joke you know to make fun of people who have an addiction and stuff like that it's not funny but um you know i definitely want to acknowledge the fact that see the signs because it doesn't matter if it's not crack exactly um people can be addicted to anything and you got to make sure you watch out for people you really care about because they could just go down a really bad spiral and then it's gonna be hard for them to get out of it and they can get you in situations that's really not safe healthy none of that but um yeah so if y'all want to hear more crazy videos of me um i have so many crazy stories i feel like some of them i'm not ready to speak on um a lot of them is like personal but i will definitely find some stories that i feel like are good enough for youtube and stuff like that if you guys really want to hear them so if you really if you like this story time please make sure you like make sure you comment let me know i would love to hear you guys feedbacks on this um and i hope you guys enjoy please make sure to subscribe follow me on my social medias and um i'll see y'all in my next video love y'all bye